Welcome. I'm Katherine Martinez. Thank you for joining me for an introduction to Dime's newest inspiration software, Dime Vintage Embroidery. It is now so easy to give a textured look to clothing, home deck, or whatever may be your passion. Don't let that name fool you. The word itself means so much more than old, the high quality of a past time. She wore a vintage gown, being the best of its kind. The jacket was vintage Chanel. Dime Vintage brings the nostalgic look of hand embroidery to meet up with today's technology to make it easy and fast to get looks like these. Just look at that texture. To begin, we look at the opening screen. It is very similar to all of Dime's inspiration software. Of course, the tools that are specific to Dime Vintage are the ones on the screen. Here you see them labeled. Also, at your fingertips is the Dime Vintage Manual to be found under Help. If this is the first software package you have purchased from Dime, you're brand new to the screen and basic software keystrokes, you may want to watch these videos for a slower, more detailed approach. All right, let's get started with this one-of-a-kind software. The button we will use most often is the Design Tool, upper left corner of the digitizing toolbar. As we click it, once in the Vintage Designs dialog box, you see the 14 design categories on the left, the design in that chosen category on the right. You'll notice, too, that every design seems to be in there twice, once without the letter D at the end and once with the letter D at the end. We'll talk more about this later. First, we'll bring a plain design to the screen, the one with the letter D. Think of D meaning design only. As we bring that to the screen, the design comes in to fit the screen. If we look at zoom, we see it comes in at 200%. If you want to back that off just a bit, use the drop down arrow, change to 100. Let's also come over here to our realistic view and turn that on so that it looks as it will when stitched out. This is my preference. You certainly can leave it as the stitch lines. If you are familiar with other embroidery software, the first difference you would notice would be the length of the stitches, and that in some areas they look like a zigzag stitch. This is one of the beauties of Dime Vintage. When these specially digitized designs are combined with the new specialty thread from Dime, we get this wonderful, heavily textured look. We'll take a look down at the thread color bar at the bottom we see 10 colors. Click the red minus sign over here in the bottom right to remove any thread colors not assigned to this design. Looking at sequence view, we see the two colors that would be used. If we click the plus on any of the colors, we expand the colors to see all of the sections of that design, many satins and a few runs for both. If we wanted to concentrate on only one of those color groups, we could click on the eyeball. Let's go ahead and click on the minus to bring that back. And here I'm talking about the eyeball that is right next to the plus sign. Click it and it will hide that color. We've not deleted it, just hidden it from view. Should we want to leave it hidden, but sort of see it, we can do a right click and ask to fade the hidden. Here, it allows us to still judge the spacing between the inner design and the outer corners. Again, we'll play with this more later. If we do a right click and ask to show all, everything is brought back to the screen. Let's now click on a section on the upper left. I'm going to go ahead and expand our border and click on the second satin and you see the portion of the design that has been selected. I'd like to come over here down at the bottom right corner and click on the green add color. It adds another color in here. To apply that color, I'll do a right click and we see that the portion of the design that was selected has been changed to the color. I'm doing this to help you see the next demonstration. I'll first come over here, do a right click and ask to collapse all. I'll select the green area that we have changed so that you can see what happens easily. 
To explain how this unique textured look is achieved, we need to look at properties. A number of the default settings are different than what we're used to in the other inspirational software, say Perfect Embroidery Pro or WordArt in Stitches. Looking at the fill type, we see that it is set to whipped. This is something specific to Dime Vintage. To refresh, a whipped stitch is really just a loop stitch down through the fabric, back up through the fabric, down again, up again, and so forth, as you see here. It is the same with these whipped stitches. Let's go ahead and zoom in quite a bit to this area so that you can see what's going to be happening. We'll turn off realistic, turn on our stitch ends, and you'll notice those points in the area indicating the actual needle penetrations. See how the stitches repeat in the same area, not actually through the same needle penetrations, but very close to it. With this whip stitch fill, we see that we also have the pattern equaling irregular edges. Watch what happens when we change that to regular edges. I'll go ahead and make that selection and apply. And if you were looking at those needle stitch ends, you saw the change. See how the needle penetrations or stitch ends align? I'll undo it. What you're going to focus on are those areas right there. I'll go ahead and do an undo, which puts it back to irregular. Again, a redo, and you see how they align. I'm going to put it back to irregular. I love this stitch, and I really like the irregular edges too. Back in properties, we'll also take a look at density you see that it's set to 2.5 millimeter, which is quite higher than a normal fill would be. Let's put it at one millimeter and apply. More stitches for sure, but we would want to do a test stitch out on this if we were going to use the new rope 15 weight thread to see if those stitches are too close or too dense. Remember, the lower the number, the more dense, or the closer, the more crowded the thread. The higher number, it is less dense, or thread is spread apart. We'll go ahead and do an undo and put that back to the 2.5 default. Something else specific to this innovative software, by default, there is no underlay for many of these designs. Think about it. We know this look gives us texture, and we want that thread to lay on top of the fabric. The stitch is longer than normal. The stitching area is sparse or less dense, so we don't really need the structure or foundation that underlay gives. If we look under our properties pull push, pull is set to absolute by default. Again, we are used to this default being none in other inspirational software. This 0.2 millimeter helps to extend the stitch points just a bit outside the area as it is stitched. Even though the area is not densely filled, the stitch is longer than normal, so it'll help with that little bit of pull. When we look under column in the properties, another difference, we see the jagged type is set to both. We are used to seeing this set to none. With the jagged value set to 0.5 millimeter, this gives a little bit more randomness to the edges of these vintage designs. If you'll keep your eye on the stitch ends anywhere here in the green, I'll go ahead and change that jagged type to none and apply. And did you notice how those stitch ends are brought closer together? They aren't extended outside each other as much as if we put that jagged type to both. I like the look of that jagged edge. The other tabs, Command and Transform, all have the defaults that we are used to. All right, let's go ahead and zoom back out to 100%. We will turn off our stitch ins, turn back on Realistic, and I'll go ahead and make that green color back to our normal number two by doing a right click on two the design is back to normal. Let's think for a moment. We really haven't changed any part of the design. It is as we brought it in originally. We just took a closer look at all the properties. So without any real changes to the design, you would be ready to do a file, save as. 
I'll give that design a name. We'll just call it first. I will then go into Save as Type and choose a PES format. Go ahead and do a save and I'd be ready to take it to my machine. Again, if we've not changed the design in any way, you really wouldn't need to save it in the C2S format as it is always just two clicks away from retrieving it again under our design tools. We'll come up to new, bring up a clean screen. Now we'll go back and open the same design without the letter D. Again, our design button. Here we see those two. We use the D first. We'll do a double click on that first one. Right away, we see the difference of a black dotted outline around the center design. This black line is called a cut line. If we take a look over here in sequence view and expand that black area, the very first in line, we see that indeed it is called cut line. Designs without the D are set up as an applique design. Let's take a look to see what that would look like stitched out. And we see here the design with fabric behind it. This cut line is really just artwork and does not stitch out. With it selected, if we look here in properties, we see that yes, it is treated as artwork. It acts as a guide to show the shape and size of the applique fabric needed, which you could cut out on a digital cutter or using printed templates as patterns for applique shapes. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. There will also be a placement line. If we expand this area right here, we see that we have that placement line. It is in the proper stitch order in sequence view. With it selected, we see that the properties here indicate that it is a run stitch set to standard, so it will stitch out. As in regular applique, this placement line shows where to place the applique fabric. Something important to note though, the placement line is not on top of the cut line. Rather, it is the same size of the center design. If you wanted to back up and use it again as a tack down stitch during the embroidery process at your machine, you could do so and that line of stitching won't show. It would be covered by the whip stitches of the center design. Let's come over to sequence view and hide that last color. Now we can see just the stitching of the placement line. We'll show that last color, select placement line again, and another way to see that is with the placement line selected, let's come up to our fabric button on our toolbar. Click on that. I'll go ahead and double click the orange so you can see it easily. See how it just fills the design shape? Even the center is open. Of course, if you had laid down an applique piece, it would have fabric in the center. Again, we'll take a look at that finished applique. I will remove the fabric by coming over here to Properties Fabric, use my drop down arrow, say None and Apply. Our design is back to normal. In this design, notice the sequence. The placement line comes after the corner pieces. That way, you don't have to trim the applique piece until the design is finished. This sequence layering allows for this. To finish the design, the last part, which is this center design, would stitch over the applique fabric anchoring it to the base fabric. All of the applique designs are raw edge. Let's take a look and compare both of those designs. Remember we had the first one without the letter D representing the applique design and you see it here with the fabric. It has the cut line and the placement line. To the right we see the design stitched out. This did have the letter D so it is the design only. These pictures came from the Vintage Design Catalog. You can view the designs in the Dime Vintage Catalog by selecting the Today screen. Up here we come to Browse the Vintage Design Catalog. If I click that, it will bring me into the Design 
catalog itself. I already have this open for us as it takes just a little while to load. But as you scroll down, you see that it is divided into the areas based on the categories. This is our abstract. If I continue to go down, you see each of the designs are stitched out showing us both the applique version and the design only version and all of the designs that are in Dime Vintage are in this catalog. So at any time you could go ahead and take a look before you stitched out. It is this easy to bring designs from Dime Vintage to your embroidery machine. Really no digitizing is required. To achieve the look that you see in my slide samples, we need to talk about the new thread collections that Dime has brought out to complement this new software. Both thread collections have no sheen. The numbers refer to the weight of the thread. Here we see one collection that is the 40 weight retro. We also have a 15 weight rope. The number indicates the weight of the thread, but in this case, the name rope also gives us an idea of its character. It has more girth than normal thread. Here's a comparison of the different weights of thread. In the pink, you can see that this is the new Retro 40 weight. Again, the weight that you are most comfortable using with your embroidery. We also have the new 15 weight, and you can see the thickness or girth of that thread. And here in the yellow, I have another brand, 12 weight, and you can see the comparison of our 15 to the 12. In the software, I have changed my default thread palette to be the vintage rope. To do that, you would click on Tools, come down under General Options. Here in Environment, you see Default Palette. Mine is already set to the Dime 15 Vintage Rope. You would use your drop-down arrow. You could choose any of the thread palettes that you'd like. But of course, I'm in Vintage, so I want to work with the new colors that are offered for me. I'll go ahead and do an OK. Having changed the default, the thread color bar here at the bottom now reflects that change. We can click on any color on the thread bar, and we're brought into the rope collection. 32 colors that really are just luscious. And of course, these tiny swatches don't do justice to the new threads. But if you look at a few of the projects, you'll see that they're just perfect for this new vintage look. I have a confession to make here. When Eileen first sent me my collection of new threads to use for the vintage samples, I didn't see any of my normal choices. Brights for sure, lime green, orange, teal, sharp gold. But as I began to embroider with these wonderfully muted, dusty colors, I did fall in love with the look because I found it wasn't about the colors, it was about the impact. In fact, this was my first project. I did it to get the feel of these new thicker threads and the look of the vintage designs. Once I played, I was hooked. I call this Where in the World is Eileen? The two designs done in black thread were cut out with enough distance from the embroidery. Remember the distance of the cut line? so that I could fray the fabric, which is perfect for this vintage look. The letter was stitched directly on the map fabric with a tweak to its density. We'll see how to do that in part two. Remember when we said this was going to be the new look of embroidery? You can see why. In order for you to be successful with this new thread and vintage design, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. They really are not suggestions. These are things you want to do. The first one indicates that we should use a 116 top stitch needle. Your manual does indicate that you can substitute a 9014 chrome top stitch. I did all of my samples using the 16 top stitch needle and was highly successful with all of my projects. The second one tells us to use embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin. Number three is very important. You want to slow down the embroidery speed on your machine to 350 stitches per minute. I know many of your machines can stitch 800, 900, 1,000 stitches per minute, but you do not want to stitch that fast. Remember our designs. They are sparse and they have longer stitch length to them and our thread is thicker. 
so you do want to slow your machine down. If available, place the spool on a vertical spool pin. If you're using the 40 retro thread, 40 weight is what you are used to using with your embroidery. Pretty much all your normal rules apply. You could use either your 7511 or 8012 embroidery needle, and of course using embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin. Let's play a little more. We'll go ahead and bring up a new screen. We'll come back up to our design, come down to continuous border. Do you notice how all of these have the letter D? There are no applique options here. All of these are design only. Double click brings it to screen. The first thing I want to do is a group on my toolbar. I'll come over and do a copy, paste, position that over next to the first one. To help with sizing this border, let's bring up our hoop size. Over to the left on our toolbox, we'll choose hoop. I'm going to come up and choose my 180 by 300, rotate it 90 degrees, OK that to bring it to screen. Let me select both of my designs, come up here to our vertical center align. I know now that they are exactly across from each other. Up on my ruler, I'll do a right click and center origin in my hoop. I do like to leave some space for wiggle room when doing continuous border. We also have our alignment marks. Coming back to our toolbar, we'll choose placement marks. I'll go ahead and put one each corner. OK it, and you see them placed there. Taking a look at sequence view, we know that they are placed in the first position, as always. So you see that many of your favorite tools are in Dime Vintage as well. Let's revisit another applique design. We'll come down to Objects. We see the baby carriage. Again, the applique is the one without the letter D. Double click brings that to screen. We're going to come over here and select the cut line. I'll expand so that you can see it. Notice that when we select the cut line, a few of the other buttons on the digitizing toolbar become active, namely the cutter. Click on that and we are brought into the cutter dialog box where we see the shape of the cut line object shown on the screen. This cutter tool takes any and all of the selected cut line outlines and places them on the right side of the dialog box representing our hoop or cutting mat on a digital cutter like the Silhouette Cameo or Brother Scan and Cut. You might even have cutting needles for your embroidery machine. The segments are placed in the optimal orientation as determined by the cutter tool. We certainly can override this placement. Here we see that the carriage is in the center and upside down. To fix that, let's look at the optimize orientation. The default set checked. The design will cut as rotated or flipped, again trying to make the best use of the space within the selected hoop. I normally want the design to cut as indicated on my design screen, so I remove this check mark. Looking at the options at the bottom, we see hoop, and we notice that it is set to the last chosen hoop. We'll go ahead and use our drop down, and you see all of the hoops for the different machines listed. Also listed are the cutting mats for the silhouette and the scan and cut. I'll go ahead and choose the silhouette, that is my digital cutter. Even though the design shows in the center of the mat, I certainly would move this placement to a top corner before the actual cutting is done. We take a look at seam allowance, set to zero. Usually this is not necessary if we have applique positions. The margin at 0.25 represents the distance away from the edge of the selected hoop, in this case, the cutting mat. Repeats defaults to 1, but if we were doing multiples of this applique, we could change the number to the desired amount. We'll go ahead and set that to 10 and apply. It makes the best use of placement within our selected hoop size. If I change those repeats to 15 and apply, we see that it fills up the first frame 
But notice now that we have a second frame and three are left. We'll go ahead and put that back to 10 and apply. The spacing of 0.25 inches wouldn't apply in, in the instance where we only have one. But when we have 10 and we set this spacing to, let's say, a 0.75 and apply, we are asking for 3 quarter inch around each of the designs. So once again, it has to give us that second frame to be able to give us the options that we have asked for. What's cool about this feature, when I click on save, I'm asked to name the file. I'll go ahead and call it app cutter play. And instead of saving it as a C2S, here I can come in, drag my bar down, and take a look at the SVG format, which is the scalable vector graphic format that I need to use it in my Silhouette Cameo. I'll click on that do a save, and it automatically creates two files. Remember we had two frames? I have two SVG files. These are the actual cutting files that I would bring into my Silhouette Cameo. I also have a PDF file that will indicate to you the different files that are there and show you the design. But if I come into Silhouette and I do a File Open, come down to the folder that is holding my designs. Here is the applique cutter play and I'll just bring up the first one. We have the cutters file brought to screen with those baby carriages. I could load my cameo and send those to cut on my fabric. If you don't have a digital cutter you can send your design to print and use that pattern shape to cut out your fabric with scissors or rotary cutter. We come into File, Print Preview. You can see there is my design. I have that cut line. What is important here for you is to make sure that in Settings you have Artworks checkmarked. That way you will see those lines and it will print as the dotted lines. We'll go ahead and close. Remember, this cutter is working off the cut line size, which is larger than the design. It will automatically give us that extra border of fabric, which is perfect for fraying. Moving on, we'll do New. We'll choose our Design button, come to Objects. I'm going to scroll down to find the Scissors 11 D. I want the design only. Double click. Bring that to screen. I'm going to group, copy, paste, do a mirror flip horizontally, drag down just a bit here. I'm going to come back out to a, a 100 zoom. And with these two designs, what I'd like to do is select them. Actually, before I do that, let me move this over just a bit here. I'm going to play so I can have some fun outline going on. Select that, and I want to rotate it so that the tip of the scissors are straight, or that edge of the scissors right there is straight. And I'm sort of eyeballing it, but I have, of course, my guideline from the ruler that I can use to help straighten this. I'll click within the ruler and drag down right on that line to see if I'm straight. I think I need to come up just a hair. That guideline has helped me get that straight. To remove the guideline, I can right click within the ruler and remove it. Now I have my two scissors the way I'd like them. And what I want to show you here is that we can make a cutter file for any combination of designs that we create by using the outline tool. I'll first select all, come up here, to our outline tool. Click on that. The default comes in as a 0.16 inches. I'll accept that and you can see that it has placed a cutting line. Again, if I expand that for you, I have a cut line around the design that I made by putting those two scissors together. All we would need to do at that point then is to have that cut line selected, come back into cutter, 
Again, I'm going to remove that optimize orientation and I see there's my cut file for my fabric. I could use as many repeats as necessary, do my save that will allow me to save in my SVG format and I would have those shapes ready to cut on my Silhouette Cameo. I'll close here. Whereas we don't have a resequence by color in Dime Vintage, we can still make this easier to stitch out. I'm going to ungroup them all. I have my individual colors set. I will choose the second silver or the second part of the scissors. Come up to the toolbar and choose move to back. Come over to sequence, click on my minus so that I can collapse the colors and I see how easy that was. Now both silver pieces will stitch out first, then both red pieces will stitch out and then of course the cut line, remember that is a artwork piece and will not stitch out. Here we did make changes to this design so I would do my file save as, save it as my C2S and then go right back in file save as, save it as my machine format. All right, a new screen back into our designs Let's stay in abstract. The design that I want is 009, so I'll scroll down a little bit. I want the design only. Double click brings it to screen. Turn on my realistic view. Here we're going to play and I want to show you that if you think over 2,500 designs are not enough, you can take one of the existing and pull parts out of it that you'd like to create a separate design. Come over to sequence and hide the center. I'm also going to hide the outside pink. What I'm interested in is this pink and purple design right here. I can also go ahead and hide the pink. So I've now made it very easy to select just that portion. I'll come back to sequence view, collapse that, bring back my pink to screen make it very easy to select that pink, drag that over. I see that I have just a little bit of purple, which is fine. I'll select that area and delete it. Drag around both of those, do a copy, new, paste. I can rotate it, realistic, drop down to 100 zoom, and now I would probably want to choose the purple and group it, choose the pink and group it, then select all items, do a right click, align, and ask it to center. At this point, I would do my file save as. I do want this as a C2S because it's something that I've created, or in this case, borrowed from an existing design, give it a proper name, and then I would go right back, file, save as, and save this under my PES format so I could use it on my machine. An added extra from this software, at least for me, is that it lends itself to embellishment so wonderfully. If I had even a little space, I added beads of some kind. This has been part one of Dime Vintage Quick Start. You saw how easy it is to bring any one of the over 2,500 designs to screen and save it in your machine format. You can also bring multiple designs to screen, manipulate them, or isolate a portion of one. We know what rules to follow for successful stitch outs. We know how important that 16 top stitch needle is. We know that we need to slow our machine speed down. Again, if you have a vertical spool pin, you'll want to use it. You'll want to watch part two as we play with all things vintage text and see what fun is to be found using the repair feature. Dime Vintage Embroidery with its new threads will bring a new dimension, quite literally, to your embroidery projects. Enjoy!